In this video, I'm going to give you a sneak preview of my new course, Progressive Web Apps with Vue.js, Quasar and Firebase. In this course, we're going to create this beautiful Instagram clone called Quasagram. And you can see it running here on Chrome and also on my real Android device, which is a Samsung A10. And you can see it has a completely different layout for desktop and mobile. On the desktop version, we have navigation at the top and on mobile we have navigation tabs at the bottom. And so we have two pages. The home page displays a list of posts and each post has an image, a location, a caption and the date the photo was taken. And on the camera page, we can access the user's camera and we can take a photo, enter a caption and we can find the user's location and create a new post. And then we see that new post on the home page. And um, we're going to store all of our data in a Firebase Cloud Firestore database. You can see all the posts here. And we're going to store all the images in Firebase storage. So you can see all of our photos here. We're also going to host our app on Firebase once it's finished. And um, we're going to set up our own endpoints for this app using cloud functions. So you can see we have a create post endpoint for creating a new post. We have a posts endpoint for getting all the posts. And we have this create subscription endpoint as well for creating a push subscription. Because in order to send out push notifications, we need to store a subscription for all of our subscribed users. And we're going to be creating all these cloud functions locally within our project. You can see them all here. And then we'll upload all of those to Firebase. And of course, I'll show you how to do all that. And the way we're going to create this app is we're first just going to create this app as a standard web app, set up all the front end, then set up all the back end using Firebase and cloud functions. And then we're going to progressively enhance it with all the main progressive web app features. So we're going to implement pre-caching and caching so that our app stores its assets on the user's device, making it super fast and launchable offline, including setting up several different caching strategies, such as network first and cache first. And we're going to implement background sync so that our app not only launches offline, but the user can even create a post offline. So if I disable the internet completely and go to the camera page, you see the camera page still works. So if we take another photo, and I'll just call this one offline, and I'll just put at home in the location, if we click post image, you can see it's created a post offline and it's marked as stored offline here. So this data is actually stored in the user's browser. And if we re-enable the internet, and we wait a sec, you can see this post is no longer marked as offline because it's now actually been uploaded to the server and to the database. So this app will actually be fully functional when completely offline. And um, we'll also be adding push notifications to this app. So if the user clicks yes on this, would you like to enable notifications banner? We can subscribe them to notifications. We see an initial push notification there. And now every time a new post is created, they'll receive a push notification, even if the app is not running. So if I just completely close the app on Chrome, on Android, completely close that. And if I now create a new post on the Chrome version, just put Chrome post, get our location, take a photo, click on post image. So we see the push notification on desktop. And if we look at the Android app, even though the app is completely closed, you can see a little camera icon up at the top there. And if we swipe to our notifications, we can see a push notification, even though the app was completely closed. And on Android, if we open up this notification, we can even see the image that was posted. And if we click on that notification, then it'll even open up the app on the homepage. And we're also going to make this app installable. So you can see on both devices, we have this install Quasagram banner. So if I click that on 
Android. Then we can add the app to the home screen with its own icon. And we can now see that there on the home screen. And if we launch it using this icon, you see a nice little splash screen. And you can see the app is now running as a full screen app with no browser Chrome or anything. So it's much more like using a real native app. And we can also install the app on Chrome as well as a Chrome app. I'm just going to uninstall that for now. And we'll also make sure the app works on all browsers, not just the later browsers that support all the latest PWA features. So if a browser doesn't support a particular feature, for example, Safari doesn't support push notifications or background sync, then we just won't use those features on those browsers. But the basic app will still work. It'll even work on Internet Explorer. You'll also learn all about the Firebase Cloud Firestore database, Firebase Cloud functions, Firebase storage, Firebase hosting, where we'll be hosting our app once it's finished, service workers, workbox, native device features like camera and location, and much more. And there'll be a couple of big assignments as well, where you'll have the opportunity to take this basic to-do list app and convert it into a progressive web app. So in the first assignment, you'll set up the Firebase end, so the Cloud Firestore database and the cloud functions. Then in the second assignment, you'll add all of the progressive web app features, such as pre-caching, caching, icons, background sync, push notifications, installability, etc. By the end of this course, you'll be able to create your own progressive web apps using Quasar Framework with all of the key progressive web app features. So it took me a month or two just to create this app. One, because I didn't know anything about PWAs before, and two, because the documentation on progressive web apps is definitely lacking. In fact, I wouldn't have been able to complete this app without some help from the Quasar team. So I want to give a huge shout out to Yusuf, Tobias, Jeff and Callow for all your help on this. And so I really believe this course will save you an enormous amount of time and headaches if you're interested in creating progressive web apps. And now having created a couple of PWAs with Quasar, I believe it's the best framework out there right now for creating them. So obviously the course app is finished and I've finished planning out the course. It's going to have about 25 modules. I expect it to be around 10 hours long and I'm hoping to release this in July 2020. Um, when it comes out, it'll have a huge launch discount for the first few days. So if you don't want to miss out on that, go to dannys.link slash Quasar PWA to sign up to the newsletter and you'll be the first to know. Or if you're watching this in the future and the course is already out, you can go to that link to get the course with my current promo code. Make sure you subscribe and like this video and let me know in the comments what you think about progressive web apps. Are they the future of apps or will the app space always be dominated by native apps and the app stores? Let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next one.